Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you what I think would be a fantastic dish that you can make for either a very busy Tuesday night that feels really special with a little festive flair to it or you can make a big batch of it for like a holiday meal or say you're having friends over around this time of year, it's beautiful. It's roast chicken with cranberries and rosemary and it is just fantastic and absolutely so easy. I will tell you this, that I've done this recipe using a spatchcock chicken, a whole chicken, and it was spectacular. Tonight I'm gonna do it with bone-in skin on chicken thighs because it's a bit more approachable um, and it's very wallet friendly um, and it's also a bit more friendly to cook on a busy night. What I do want you to look for are some really beautiful chicken thighs. These are a really decent size um, and I love that. So I've got three of those, again, adjust to however, however many people you are serving, but a whole chicken spatchcock would be so fantastic for this. Oh, I love it. Salt and pepper, cast iron skillet preheating with a touch of light olive oil. I've got my oven preheated to 375. You're gonna take some salt and pepper and along with any sort of garlic and herb seasoning that you like, you can make one, you can buy one. I like it, if you're gonna buy it, make sure it's salt free because you know me, I'm a control freak. And I like to make sure that I control the amount of salt because sometimes when it comes to seasonings, like pre-made blends, to get a good enough amount on there for it to be really delicious, um, you oversalt it. We don't wanna do that. I'm gonna do it on both sides. I'm gonna skip the pepper on that side just because I have a dirty hand and I don't wanna touch my pepper mill. Um, what you could also do is take this entire chicken recipe, okay? The sauce, the cranberries, the chicken, put it all in a Ziploc bag or in a container. Throw it into the fridge, leave it for 24 hours overnight or whatever. The next day, take it, throw it into a hot oven. Don't worry about searing it. It won't get its beautiful color unless you broil the top of the chicken. But let me just tell you, tested it that way, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You get an even deeper flavor, obviously on the chicken from the marinade sitting on it for a long time, but I like to share this recipe, this version, because it is friendly for a weeknight meal, but special enough for a weekend. This is nice and hot. I like it, I like it a lot. Put that in there. I'm just gonna worry about Searing it really well. It's a little crowded because those chicken thighs were Italian chicken thighs, AKA they were plump and delish. Um, I'm worried about just getting that to be really beautifully colored and then we're gonna go ahead and put our sauce together, but I have to wash up first. To make the sauce, you're gonna need some chicken stock, a little bit of balsamic vinegar. You're gonna need a touch of honey, although you can use maple syrup you can use brown sugar, whatever, salt and pepper, and some orange juice. I'm gonna go ahead and just grate, grate, squeeze a couple of little clementines. It's gonna be the perfect amount for this. And you're just gonna squeeze them right in. That chicken looks phenomenal, okay? I'm just temporarily going to remove it from the skillet. Now, there's a good amount of chicken fat in this pan. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some shallots. I just cut them in half lengthwise, cranking the heat up. I just wanna put them in there for literally a few seconds to develop some color. And then I'm going to get rid of some of that chicken fat because it's going to continue to render out more fat as it cooks, but I just don't want it to start off with so much fat. One of the benefits of searing those chicken thighs when you are working with a skin on, sort of a bone-in skin on chicken thigh, one of the benefits of searing them skin side first is that you render out a lot of the fat so that you don't end up with a really greasy sauce. Like I said, I love me some chicken fat, so I'm not typically really worried about it, but Sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and it can take over the dish, which that I don't love. So that's my two cents on that. I just wanted to sear those shallots for literally a few seconds just to develop a tiny bit of color, but I'm not taking them any further because they are gonna cook in the sauce in the oven and be 
just jammy and delicious. I'm going to take this. Look how much there is in there. See, that's just a lot. And I just don't need it. Put your shallots back in. Then you're gonna go ahead and pour your sauce all around the edges. This is so good, so good. That, like, that thickener is going to be the honey. So it's a bit liquidy right now, but it's gonna be fantastic. I'm taking some cranberries. Mine are, were fresh, but I just threw them into the freezer just to keep them from spoiling. The cranberries are gonna give you a touch of tartness because you've got that sweet and tangy sauce. The cranberries are just gonna add to that. And then some fresh rosemary. And the combo of everything together. I mean, it smells fantastic just now. And I haven't even really cooked everything together, but it smells fantastic and I cannot wait to have this for dinner. I'm gonna pop it into my oven at 375. Those chicken thighs are quite big, so I'm gonna leave them in there about 25, 30 minutes. It's really hard to overcook a chicken thigh, which is one of the benefits to cooking dark meat chicken. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. This was in the oven for 30 minutes. I wanna show you the sauce and how thick and luxurious it is. And I wanna give you another tip. If you find your sauce is a little loose, it's a little liquidy, it's a little watery, don't be tempted to thicken it with a corn sludge slurry. You're making this in a, in a skillet, right? So just put the skillet right on the stove top, turn the heat on maybe a couple of minutes and it will reduce and give you a really beautiful uh, consistency. But this looks beautiful. When I serve it, I'm gonna just serve it with some fresh herbs on top. And look at that chicken. Just look at how it falls apart right here. Look at that. It falls apart and it is absolutely perfection. Those shallots are beautiful and jammy at this point. Um, really fantastic. Look at that sauce. You know it's gonna be good. I gotta take a picture of this for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna try not to mess with it too much. It is honestly out of this world, I need a cranberry. The cranberry is lovely and tart, so it mixes really well with that sweetness from the balsamic and the honey. It's just really dynamite. And like I said, this with maybe like a potato gratin or a mash or anything sort of starchy to soak up that sauce uh, would be fantastic. And once I put some fresh herbs on this and just put a few extra fresh cranberries that I reserved alongside, it's gonna look so beautiful and festive. It is meant to be at the table, especially around this time of the year. You will love it. Go to lara.inthekitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.